What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I know that I am because I'm super pumped to make this video. It's a video that I've been, I don't want to say putting off for a long time, but I wanted to use this piece of gear, like really use and abuse it and get you an honest review on if it is still worth it today. And I think that I have finally accomplished that. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Apple, this is the 2020 edition by the way, the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. And I've had this thing for about two years. I got it right about when it came out. Um, and I am honestly blown away by it. Now this is a small computer. Look at it, compared to the size of my head, it's a pretty small computer and it is extremely light. I think they said it's about 2.8 pounds. I am pretty positive on that. Um, and then I wanted to go over the specs really quick with you. So I got the basic model. Um, I didn't think that I needed all the crazier specs. Um, and so I got the, it was the eight core, the eight gigabyte, the 256 memory, and it is a 13.3 retina display. I'm not great at specs. I'll go ahead and put that out there. Um, but I did make sure that that was the specs that I had in this computer. I just got the basic model, honestly, because it was the cheapest. So I bought this laptop because my MacBook Pro finally kicked the bucket. And I was gonna go for the newer Pro, um, but the price difference is, is quite large. And at the time, the only thing that I could really afford was the MacBook Air. And I was worried that I was gonna be disappointed in it, to be completely honest, because I'm a heavier kind of computer person. Um, and like I just said, this thing is extremely light. So it's not perfect for me in the weight capacity, but everything else is just spot on for it. So. We're gonna just go ahead and dive right into kind of like a pros and cons list because I think that's the best way to go about it. Um, so right off the bat, like I just said, the con for me, which I think is a pro for a ton of people, is the weight. I just, I feel like when they're super light that I, I kind of like abuse them a little bit more. I don't mean to, but I'll go to put it down and I don't realize how light it is and I kind of slam it by accident. And it's just something that I personally prefer a heavier computer. Then I also, this was a huge jump that I didn't realize the difference, but like I said, I came from a MacBook Pro to this Air and the lighting is significantly different. Um, I am a content creator, so I'm constantly editing pictures, doing Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, things of that nature that I'm staring at the screen for a very long time. And I know that you shouldn't, but I always have the light cranked up to the max. And um, I found myself in a lot of situations where I felt like the screen was just not bright enough and I didn't realize the difference. Um, this is my first Air, by the way. I've always had a MacBook Pro, but I just didn't realize how much dimmer the Air is, which again, could be a pro for you if you have extremely sensitive eyes that you wanna be able to take that, that brightness down. Um, I think that the Air is a good option for you, but if you're someone like me who is a content creator and you like a very bright screen, um, it is gonna fall short in that area for you. And I was extremely disappointed in that capacity. That alone, that display made me buy an iMac. And it was because I'm editing pictures all day, every day, and having to look at an extremely dim screen while you're trying to color grade, it's hard. I'm not gonna lie, that alone would turn me off from buying another MacBook Air. But I will say if that isn't a problem for you, the processing speed on this, the M1 chip, I mean, it's there's a reason that it is like the standard in Apple now, it is fast. I mean, it is extremely fast. I was kind of worried because I just mentioned that I'm a content creator, so I constantly have Lightroom is open, Final Cut is open, Photoshop, all of those things I need open at all times. And I was worried that trying to run even two programs at once, it was gonna kind of stall out. It was gonna be slow and it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't at all. I recently, I just had, I was making a thumbnail. I was editing my YouTube video. So I had Final Cut Pro open and then I was making the thumbnail at the same time. So I had Photoshop open. And then I realized that my photo was in Lightroom. And so I had all three open at the same time. I exported from Lightroom and then I put it into Photoshop and I was able to edit at the same time that video and that thumbnail and it didn't even blink. I mean, the thing was lightning fast and 
it thoroughly impressed me. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. It was a, a huge eye-opener for me for what this thing is capable of doing. Um, also, I would like to say, you don't hear... I don't know the technology in it as to why you don't hear it, but you don't hear the fans running. This, the thermal in it, I'm so used to having to... If I'm sitting on, like, with the laptop in my lap, and I'm realizing that... I'm editing and the computer's getting extremely hot. Like my thighs are burning by the time that I'm done editing. Uh, that was with my MacBook Pro. And you know, you have to constantly lift it, let it breathe. You, you hear the fans running and then you can put it back down. But with this one, I've noticed you don't hear those fans running and it doesn't get hot to the touch. And I wasn't used to that. And that is like a huge pro for me because if I'm on the go, I don't always have a table in front of me. It's called a laptop for a reason. I was also in my lap and it just, it really bothered me when, I mean, the heat would even go through jeans and such, like it would get so hot and this one just doesn't do that. It's, it's a perfect temperature at all times. And like I said, with running multiple programs, you always feel it just heating up. Like it just, it gets warm. It is working really hard, but you don't feel that with this one. And I think the M chip has, the M1 chip has a lot to do with that because it's such a faster processor. So that's a huge pro for me. Um, another thing though, I am extremely happy with the, the Thunderbolt charging ports. It charges extremely fast and it stays charged for an extremely long amount of time. But having those, those Thunder ports, they eliminated, you, I'll show you. So you, they brought back the headphone jack, which I think is kind of comical because I, that's not the thing that I would have brought back on this, but they also have on this side the the two thunder ports. So you just notice there's no SD card reader on this laptop, which really, really irritates me. We're in 2022, and even in 2020 when this came out, content creation is huge. And you know people are constantly using DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and all these this gear that still requires SD cards. Why is that something that you took away from us? And in this model, why would you not bring it back? People already complained. Like when I had the Pro, it didn't have an SD card reader. And I know that was a huge complaint to Apple. And I just don't know why when you come out with the M1 that is fast enough to process videos and all this stuff, why would you not bring the SD card reader back? But it's okay because you can buy these little dongles. Um, so this has the Thunderbolt. I don't know if y'all can see that. I can't really see if it's focusing, but so these little things, you just stick your SD card in here. I have another one that is right here. So this has multiple adapters. You just stick it in with this Thunderbolt. But I've noticed it, over time, this was an expensive one too. I think I paid 90 bucks for this one. And over time, the charging ports just kind of stopped working. And so I can either buy another $90 adapter or I have to unplug that, let my laptop charge, and then go back to what I was doing. Um, and so that just really bothered me. I know that in the, the newest, I think it's the MacBook Pro, they brought back the SD card reader. It's just, a, it's a little bit too late for me, honestly. It just, it really irritated me that they took so long to bring that back after everybody was already complaining about it. But nonetheless, what I'm trying to get at is the charging ports are extremely fast. I enjoy the Thunderbolt for those, but if you want to have a content creation, you're going to have to get one of these adapters. And also, this, this specific model, I know they have other models, but this specific one only has two Thunderbolt insertion things. I don't know what to call them, but that means that this is taking up my entire Thunderbolt. So, like I said, if this didn't use the charger, you can't charge your laptop at the same time. They do have models that come with um, four, it's two on each side, but I just, I don't know. I feel like they fell really short with the charging ports and the SD card and just even flashes, things of that nature. I feel like they just, they really tanked on that one. But I will say one of my all time favorites and the reason that I love this model and all the models I think really have it now, but if you can see right up here, that is a, it's your fingerprint. So I just, I put it on, laptop opens immediately. So it's essentially like your iPhone, 
um, before they switched to the face ID that you would just put your thumb on and or any finger that you used, but it's just your finger ID. It's so much faster. And I know that seems like such a, a minor detail in a laptop. I could easily type in my password, but if I'm on the go and I need to get something done rapidly, you don't realize how much time that very swipe of your finger, it just saves you. And I don't know, it just, that is one of my favorite parts of this computer. And I know that's like one of the most minor details that we have, but I just, I really, really enjoy it. Even if you can have a short little password, sure. I mean, you can make it quick, but I really, really enjoy the, the fingerprint. And I would say if you're going to buy a laptop, if you're into the Apple products, which I would assume if you're watching this video, I would make sure that I would upgrade to the versions that have the finger ID. Now I do want to talk about this version does not have up here is what I'm talking about. It's not the light bar. They are the keys. And that is a huge pro to me because I just got rid of, I told you all my MacBook Pro had the, the light bar. That thing went out on me. And I, I don't know why I never, like I was like super, super cautious with that laptop. And I was just sitting in bed one day, I was doing something and the light bar just went out and I was like, that's extremely strange. I did every little test that they told me to do. I called Apple, I talked to them and they were like, well, this should fix it. Nothing fixed it. And so I took it to the Apple store and they said it was something with the hard drive itself, like that ran the light bar. They wanted $500 to fix the light bar. And I, and this is the entire reason as to why I bought the MacBook Air, but I could have either paid, and I had a 2018 MacBook, and this is in 2020, could have paid 500 bucks to fix that light bar, or I could have paid $900 and got the newest Air with the M1 chip. And so that's why, that was my thought process. I was like, why would I not just spend the extra couple hundred dollars, even for the most basic model, and this thing runs significantly better than my Pro ever did, and I at least know that this doesn't have a light bar to go out on me. Um, and it, it sucks. I'm super stoked for that light bar. It was like, the, when it was working, it was like the coolest thing ever. Um, I love the glide of like the sound and the light and all of that. But let me tell you, when that goes out and that is your only form of kind of changing the display, unless you want to go into the settings, man, it, it really, really sucked. So I'm kind of, I'm happy that it went out so that I could have this MacBook Air. Um, and like I said, it's a great computer. I'm not complaining at all about it. I'm extremely thankful to have the MacBook Air like this, but I think that it has some flaws. And I think if you are a content creator, just take what I said into consideration, like take in the display, how dim it is, you know, take in how quick though the processing is, the light, uh, the weight of it, how light it is. If you like a heavier computer, the Thunderbolts, you know, the SD card reader, there is a lot of pros and cons to this laptop, but I do think after two years of using it, it is absolutely worth it today. It honestly, I have the newest iMac and they could compete against each other. Truly. The MacBook Air is one of the fastest computers that I've ever had. And like I said, I can't really speak on the latest and greatest laptops that are out there, but I do not personally plan on upgrading this MacBook Air until something wild comes along next and or this thing breaks because I just don't see a reason to upgrade. The The cons that are with it are just fine until, you know, they drive me absolutely crazy. But I absolutely think the 2020 MacBook Air is worth it in 2022. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button. We are posting content all the time. We're doing lens reviews and gear reviews and pro tips and tricks and everything you ask for. So hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get all my post notifications and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.